The group comprising the cartilaginous fish, known as chondrichthians, have, as a whole, survived numerous extinction events and have withstood the tests of time. While they are often considered to be living fossils, due to how seemingly little they have changed throughout time, this isn't necessarily a true statement, and it does a disservice to their astonishing diversity throughout deep time. When trying to piece together the mysteries of ancient life and evolution, figuring out the exact age of fossilized remains is an essential and complex task. Through exhaustive relative and exact dating methods, geologists, which are scientists specializing in the study of the Earth's physical structure and substance, its history, and the processes that act on it, developed a series of units of time to break down Earth's history into more palatable chunks. Earth's over 4.5 billion year history is broadly split into four units of time known as eons. The four eons in Earth's history, from oldest to youngest, include the Hadean, the Archean, the Proterozoic, and the Phanerozoic. While single-celled organisms have been around for billions of years, and animal fossils have been discovered in the Proterozoic, vertebrates, or animals with backbones, which includes the Chondrichthians, first appear in the latest eon, the Phanerozoic. The Phanerozoic is divided into three units of time known as eras. From oldest to youngest, these eras include the Paleozoic, which translates to ancient life in Greek, Mesozoic, which means middle life, and Cenozoic, which translates to recent life. These units of time are further split into smaller chunks known as periods. In this episode of Lasmocast, we will be delving into the periods of the Phanerozoic in chronological order from oldest to youngest, and some of the important evolutionary events of Chondrichthians throughout every time period. We will be basing all of the numbers of this episode from the International Chronostratigraphic Chart, version 2023-04, created by the International Commission on Stratigraphy. And while you're here, please help support the YouTube channel by interacting with it via liking and commenting, as well as hitting that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you never miss a video. It all really helps grow this channel and is very much appreciated. This episode is brought to you by On Point Fossils. If you are looking for some of the rarest and highest quality chondrichthian teeth on the market, check out onpointfossils.com to obtain your dream specimens. The oldest geologic period in the Paleozoic is the Cambrian, which lasted from approximately 538.8 plus or minus 0.2 million years ago to 485.4 plus or minus 1.9 million years ago. It was during this period that a tremendous biodiversity event took place known as the Cambrian Explosion. All sorts of weird and wonderful creatures evolved at this time. Types that paved the way for life on Earth today, and others that were evolutionary dead ends, like many of the oddities found at the famous Burgess Shale. The first chordates, the phylum of animals that have at some point in their lives possessed a flexible rod that supports their backside, known as a notochord, evolved at this time. The chondrichthians are a part of this phylum, though they have not yet evolved during the Cambrian. The next geologic period is the Ordovician, which spans from approximately 485.4 plus or minus 1.9 million years ago to 443.8 plus or minus 1.5 million years ago. It was during this period that the first fossil evidence of possible chondrichthians appeared. No teeth have yet been published from the Ordovician, and all that has been found are chondrichthian-like scales. The oldest chondrichthian-like scale as of now has been described as Tantalepis gatehousei, from the Middle Ordovician Age stairway sandstone of Central Australia. The first of the Big Five mass extinctions marks the end of the Ordovician period. The culprit of this mass extinction has traditionally been attributed to an ice age, that was then followed by subsequent warming, 
which has been estimated to have wiped out approximately 85% of marine species. New research, however, suggests volcanism as the cause of the mass extinction, followed by warming and anoxia, which is the lack of oxygen. Following the Ordovician comes the Silurian period. This period spanned from 443.8 plus or minus 1.5 million years ago to 419.2 plus or minus 3.2 million years ago. During the Silurian, the Chondrichthians swimming around belonged to a paraphyletic group known as the Acanthodians, which are commonly referred to as the spiny sharks for commonly possessing numerous fin spines. A paraphyle is a group that contains an ancestor and some of its descendants, but not all of them. This is the case for the Acanthodians, as evidence indicates that some Acanthodians may have given rise to the other Chondrichthians, which aren't typically referred to as Acanthodians. This is also when the oldest known tooth Chondrichthians appear in the fossil record. To date, the oldest known Chondrichthian teeth belong to Chinotus duplicus, which has been described from the early Silurian of China. I made a much more detailed video on Chinotus duplicus. I'll attach a link to it below for you YouTube viewers, so be sure to check it out after you're done watching this one. After the Silurian is the Devonian period, which ranged from approximately 419.2 plus or minus 3.2 million years ago to 358.9 plus or minus 0.4 million years ago. This was a time of major diversification for the cartilaginous fish, with several new tooth and body designs evolving. A common tooth design of the Devonian chondrichthians is known as the dipletont design, which has two large lateral cusps with either a significantly reduced or absent middle cusp. This tooth design is present in one of the earliest non-acanthodian-grade chondrichthians, Leonotus carlsi, known from the early Devonian of Spain. Evolving later on in the Devonian is the cladodont design, which have a principal median cusp and lateral cusplets, as well as a broad basal platform. An example of a cladodontomorph chondrichthian is the iconic Devonian genus Cladosolacae, known from complete articulated remains, which is quite rare in the fossil record, as chondrichthians' cartilaginous skeletons don't often preserve well. The type specimen was described from the late Devonian Cleveland Shale of Ohio. Other oddball chondrichthians that evolved in the Devonian included the phobodontiforms, which were eel-like in shape and had bizarre pronged teeth whose main cusps, usually three, are more or less equal in length. It was in this period that the halocephalans evolved, which is the group in which modern-day ratfish are a part of. Hybodoniforms and Prodacrodoniforms also evolved in the Devonian, which were much closer related to the sharks and rays of today. The Devonian ended in the world's second of the Big Five mass extinction events. Some hypotheses for why this mass extinction occurred include global cooling, as well as oxygen deprivation due to anoxic conditions. Still, chondrichthians as a whole survive this mass extinction and go into the Carboniferous period, spanning from 358.9 plus or minus 0.4 million years ago to 298.9 plus or minus 0.15 million years ago. The Carboniferous is split up into two subperiods, with the early Carboniferous being the Mississippian and the late Carboniferous being the Pennsylvanian. Many incredible and bizarre chondrichthians called the Carboniferous waters home. It was during this time that the Neosalations first appeared, which are the group comprising of the true sharks and rays. Some of the most bizarre taxa from the Carboniferous belong to the subclass Eucondrocephali, which is a broad group that also contains within it the Holocephalans. An iconic Eucondrocephalan is Adestus. The genus Adestus is commonly referred to as the scissor tooth shark due to their unique tooth whorls, though they belong into the order Eugenodoniforms, 
which are more closely related to the ratfish than they are to the true sharks. Other interesting eucondrocephalons that were successful in the Carboniferous were the Patalodonts, which had weird dentitions and even weirder body plans. Their teeth can be petal-like in shape, hence their name. Yet another chondrichthian order that made its debut in the Carboniferous were the Xenocanthiforms. These convergently resembled eels and had teeth of diplodont design. Many members of the Xenocanthiforms were apex predators of freshwater ecosystems. Succeeding the Carboniferous is the Permian period, lasting from 298.9 plus or minus 0.15 million years ago to 251.902 plus or minus 0.024 million years ago. Like the Carboniferous, a diverse array of strange chondrichthians continued patrolling Earth's Permian waters. Arguably the most famous is Helicoprion. Helicoprion is affectionately referred to as the World Tooth Shark and was a longtime favorite of mine as a child. I remember being in, I think it was first grade, having my dad email a fossil dealer asking if he had any Helicoprion tooth whorls. And we had received a response along the lines of, do you have $20,000? Needless to say, I was disappointed <laughs> at seven or eight years old from hearing that. But anyways, Helicoprion, like Adestus, is a member of the order Eugenodoniforms and is thus not a true shark, but rather more closely related to the ratfish. This was also when the first true sharks appear in the fossil record, with Synecodus antiquus teeth being described from the early Permian of Russia. The Permian ended in catastrophe, with the third and largest mass extinction event wiping out approximately 96% of marine species. This wreaked havoc amongst the Chondrichthians, with entire orders being wiped off the face of the earth and leaving others hanging on for dear life. The primary culprit, you may ask? The clues lie in the Siberian traps. Here, evidence indicates an eruption of a flood basalt volcano polluted the atmosphere, forming short-duration volcanic winters, long-term warming, shallow water anoxia, and rapid CO2 buildup. Chondrichthians, while taking a massive beating from what is referred to as the Great Dying, chugged onwards and into the Mesozoic Era, famous for being the age of the dinosaurs. The first period in the Mesozoic is the Triassic, ranging from 251.902 plus or minus 0.024 million years ago to 201.4 plus or minus 0.2 million years ago. Survivors of the Permian-Triassic mass extinction event include the Eugenodoniforms, the Xenocants, and the Cladodontomorphs. The two most prominent survivors, however, are the Neosalachians and the Hybodoniforms, which were the most diverse and abundant chondrichthians during the Triassic. The true sharks began diversifying in the Triassic, though no orders that are alive today have been positively identified. The most abundant sharks at the time belonged to an early evolving order known as the Synecodoniforms. The end of the Triassic was brought forth by number four of the big five mass extinctions, and it is thought to have been caused by volcanics. Notice the trend here? Our planet was once filled with awe-inspiring diversity within the cartilaginous fish, but by the end of the Triassic, only the hybodoniforms, neosalachians, chimeroids, which are the ratfish, and the cladodontomorphs trek forward into the next period. Things that change in the favor of sharks happen in the Jurassic, which rages from 201.4 plus or minus 0.2 million years ago to around 145 million years ago. During this period, many of the extant shark orders began appearing. The true sharks split up into two suborders, the Gallian sharks and the Squalian sharks. Sharks become more recognizable with early forms of cow sharks, cat sharks, and angel sharks, among others, appearing in the fossil record. Most sharks were still smaller than what their chondrichthian predecessors have been able to attain and to what future ones have in store for them. 
The earliest unequivocal ray teeth are known from the early Jurassic period, though they likely also go back further in the fossil record. Chondrichthians once again start dominating the seas in the next period, the Cretaceous. The Cretaceous spans from around 145 million years ago to 66 million years ago. In the Cretaceous period, one order of shark in particular, the Lamniforms, also known as the mackerel sharks, began diversifying and taking up roles as an apex predator all across the globe. The most famous of these macro-predatory mackerel sharks has to be Cretaxirana mantili, aka the Ginsu shark, which appropriately obtained that common name from their large and sharp teeth, superficially resembling a Ginsu knife. This shark held its own amongst a sea teeming with mosasaurs, massive predatory fish, and of course, other large sharks. Meanwhile, the rest of the extant orders also evolved in the Cretaceous. The Cretaceous period ended with perhaps the most famous mass extinction event of all, the one that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs 66 million years ago. This extinction event laid out a heavy toll on sharks and took out the long-lasting hybodonts, the cladodontomorphs, which sought refuge by occupying deep-sea niches, have no evidence of surviving past the early Cretaceous, though their post-Paleozoic fossil records are quite spotty, with long ghost lineages leading up to the Cretaceous. This leaves only the modern-day sharks, rays, skates, and ratfish to move on to the next period. The commonly held belief is that a massive asteroid crashed into the Earth in what is now the Gulf of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, Another opposing view is that the flood basalt volcano eruptions that happened shortly before the mass extinction in what is now the Deccan Traps in India caused the event. What do you think took out the non-avian dinosaurs and hybodonts? Let us know and explain your response in the comments section below. With the end of the Cretaceous period came the end of the Mesozoic era and the beginning of the Cenozoic one. The Cenozoic era's first period is known as the Paleogene which took place from 66 million years ago to 23.03 million years ago. In the Paleogene, Lanmaforms dominate and obtain massive sizes. Among the most famous lineages that is well represented in the Paleogene fossil record is the Ototus Carcaricles lineage, with clear evolutionary stages being marked at set geologic times. Another order becomes increasingly successful as well, the Carcharaniforms, also known as the ground sharks. The once prominent Senecodoniforms became extinct during the Paleogene, leaving the world with just the extant orders we see today. After the Paleogene comes the Neogene period, from 23.03 million years ago to 2.58 million years ago. Macropredatory sharks meet new records in the Paleogene. Lomniforms and Carcharaniforms continue increasing in size, with the most famous prehistoric shark of all time evolving during this period, Carcharicles megalodon. And yes, I still use the genus Carcharicles rather than Ototus for this animal, and perhaps that is a conversation for a different video, but that is beyond the scope of this one. Anyways, Carcharicles megalodon is famous, and rightfully so, for its monstrous teeth that can exceed 7 inches in length. Another example of neogene gigantism in lamniforms includes Peritotus benedini, commonly known as the false mako, as it is more closely related to Carcharicles megalodon than it is to the makos. A Carcharinoform that was able to reach massive sizes in the neogene was the extinct snaggletooth hemiprisicera, which is known to have teeth that exceed 2 inches in length. Not even Carcharicles megalodon can survive the neogene, however. Carcharicles megalodon is believed to have become extinct well before the upper boundary of the neogene, which brings us to our next and last period, the Quaternary. So what sharks are alive during the Quaternary? Whatever is still swimming today. The Quaternary period is everything from 2.58 million years ago to present day. The most iconic shark is by far the Great White, or Carcharodon carcarius. While it may have been dwarfed by Carcharicles megalodon, and it did evolve in the Neogene, 
The great white survived and is top dog in the shark world today. As a whole, however, lamniforms aren't doing so well. The real kings of the quaternary are the carcharinids, aka the ground sharks. Lomniform diversity is a near fraction of what it was, and this was a trend taking place even before human intervention. Some people argue that we are living amidst a sixth mass extinction event, this one being caused by us. We as a species have to be more diligent and focus on conservation, as it is a very real possibility that we can cause or expedite the extinctions of countless shark species let alone even larger groups that have stood the test of time. I hope you enjoyed this video. What is your favorite geologic time period? Let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new shark and paleontology related content. We'll catch you guys next time.